Ah, uh, doing the Lord's work. Hello everyone, most of you know me as Lark. I am Raven's research aide, script editor, and brother, and I am happy to welcome you to Lark's Lamentations. In this series, we will be dissecting factions through various forms of media and discuss where they went wrong on a fundamental level and how they could have been improved. I have been chomping at the bit to start this for a while, so which faction to tear into first? The Star Wars is the First Order? For Honor's Blackstone Legion? Far Cry 5's Eden Gates? No. Those would make sense. Instead, I'm going to beat the metaphorical shit out of the dumbest faction in the most controversial Fallout game, before 76 existed, the Railroad. In case any of you are new to Fallout, allow me to explain the world briefly. The world was destroyed in a nuclear war in 2077. Fallout 4 takes place 210 years after the bombs dropped. Your character was frozen in a vault with your spouse and son. You wake up to find your spouse murdered and son taken. I'm okay. Almost. Everything's gonna be fine. Yeah. and you brave the radioactive remains of Boston to seek revenge. God damn it, you mercenary motherfucker. Where is my son? Overall concept out of the way, let's brush up on the Railroad. The Railroad is one of the four main factions in the base game of Fallout 4. But before we can talk about the Railroad faction, we need to talk about the enemy faction, the Institute. Okay, so long story short with the Institute, they are the evil version of MIT that burrowed itself underground when the bombs drop and decided that mad science and technocracy is the way to go. Their hobbies include building robots, creating synthetic people, assassinating people to replace with synthetic people, mission proceeding according to plan, ambush set for railroad targets, and just being terrible neighbors. Yes, even worse than good neighbor. Now, why'd you have to go and say that, huh? Breaking my heart over here. You all right, brother? Yeah, don't worry. These dumbasses will get their own episode. I can only imagine what you've heard. What you think of us. But the big thing to focus on here is one of their pet projects, the creation of synthetic people, or synths for short. These synths are essentially identical to humans in every way, excluding a computer chip in their brains that helps control them. Basically, synth slavery, and this is where the railroad comes in. You see, the railroad's sole reason to exist is to liberate synths from the Institute. You have to understand the railroad views Gen 3's synths the same as normal humans, and they consider their treatment under the Institute as akin to slavery, and thus they have taken it upon themselves to act as the Underground Railroad of our history, instead of actually liberating slaves from southern plantations, they're liberating our synthetic brothers and sisters and whisking them to away to a better world and to freedom. So close to real people that the distinction is meaningless. The Institute treats synths as property, as tools. So we seek to free the synths from their bondage. Give them a chance at a real life. Well, with that backstory in mind, it might surprise you that I detest the railroad. What? What are you talking about? They are my least favorite faction in any Fallout game. Yes, I even prefer Kaisar's Legion to these dipshits. Degenerates like you belong on a cross. Despite their somewhat noble intentions, the Railroad fails for me on every level. Their planning and execution are terrible. Ticonderoga was wiped out by coursers. No survivors. All hands lost? God. Damn it, that's not the news I wanted to hear. Their personnel? Abject morons. The Institute has these tiny microscopic robots in the food, man. And they report back. Their benefits? Runners will be sent to acquire contents. Reward dispensed. Holy Jesus. What is that? What the fuck is that? And their morals and priorities are lifted from Tumblr. The line gets muddy. Do we defend AI rights? Terminals? Hell, turrets? Anytime it gets brought up, fireworks. All the old arguments flare up. 
The upshot is Glory and some others won't run missions like this. Overall, they are the bane of the Commonwealth's existence, and they have the audacity to act surprised when people don't like them or the synths. Okay, I know that's a lot to break down, but let's start from the top, planning and execution, and why they suck. The railroad, as mentioned before, has only one true concrete objective. Escort synths away from the Institute, give them new memories and new lives. And they fail at this job until the very end of the game. Prior to the final mission, guess how many synths you save working with the railroad? A hundred? Fifty? Thirty? Eight. You save eight. One early on when you first join, three indirectly by working with Randolph Safe House, and there are four at Bunker Hill. Hell, even joining the organization is bullshit. Let's say you're crazy enough to want to gain membership into the Losers Club. You will have to follow the Freedom Trail, which is covered with raiders and super mutants. Then, when you arrive at the church, you need to kill the ghoul infestation before you wander into the catacombs, input a code into a weird lock, then the railroad will talk with you. Now for the player, this isn't too difficult. But, it is possible. Imagine, though, a regular NPC trying to do this. They would get killed before making it to the church. This is a terrible way to recruit people. But hey, the railroad prides itself on secrecy. As a result, not only are their recruitment practices kind of weird, they communicate largely through dead drops. The paranoid old bat won't even tell us the problem. He insists that we get our intel from a dead drop. Speak in code. Oh, thank God. Do you have a Geiger counter? Do you have a goddamn Geiger counter? And operate numerous safe houses. Hi, Rice, we're at the good safe house. Yet, ironically, this secrecy doesn't seem to get them anywhere. Multiple agents are often sent on the same missions. Wait. <laughs> we got assigned the same damn job? With all our compartmentalization bullshit? This sort of shit happens. You got the job from the good neighbor side. I got it from Griswold's safe house. How's this sort of thing happen? So Griswold's got trouble, and they send a cryptic note to HQ. Send in the big guns. And on the other side, the doctor's got troubles too. So she sends in her own damn cryptic note. And then comes the comedy. Then they're just wasting my time. Don't you know it? Safe houses are constantly being destroyed, including their main headquarters, which was destroyed by the Institute before the start of the game. Ah, uh, the Institute didn't content itself with just destroying our headquarters. No. They launched simultaneous strikes on all we hold dear. Herkema and Allen safe houses are both confirmed kills. Many fear Augusta will be added to that list. How bad did the Institute hurt us, Doc? Frankly, we're lucky there's a railroad left at all. I don't remember a time our numbers have been so few, but the mission carries on. Great job, guys. The funniest part of it all is how the Institute gets around railroad secrecy, because they keep one-upping them every chance they get. How do they do it? You know what? I want you to guess. I want you to th th you know, think for a moment. How do you think the railroad sees through all the intricacies of railroad espionage? Is it A, infiltrating the organization with synths, B, having Corsairs and synths teams comb the surface for clues, or C, paying some random trader to report any railroad activity? All right, place your bets now. All right, ready to go? Okay. If you put your caps on anything other than C, you give way too much credit to the railroad. <sighs> Here's the thing. If you go to the SRB and the Institute later in the game, one computer has a list of traders that free and that fed information about the railroad to the Institute. That's right. All the hurdles and ropes that the railroad jumps through to remain hidden are no match for Trash Can Carla casually chilling on the side of the road. So, let's just say when you do join the railroad, you would expect they would be trying to rebuild the railroad after, you know, losing their main base, you know, and, you know, escorting synths, that sort of thing. You know, the main objective of the railroad. And nope. While there is some of that, the lion's share of the missions you are, are given are setting up cameras for that dumbass 
Finding dollar store CIA weapon caches for your robot overlord Pam. Yeah, this is what the railroad sends its best agents on. Setting up cameras and finding old caches with trash in them. Should the player... Shouldn't the player be... Oh, I don't know. Saving. Fucking. Synths! I thought we were rescuing synths. What a glorified waste of time. Only in the late game do they actually start throwing you some decent missions. Thank goodness you start getting sent to hunt down coursers in the late game, otherwise I would have blown myself up. Speaking of reasons to kill yourself, let's meet the main members of the railroad, because when you look at the upper echelon of the railroad, it becomes obvious very quickly the issues with the railroad come from on high. Starting with Desdemona. Only in charge, presumably because the last leader died. She shows no leadership skills, doesn't keep her people in the loop of what's going on, and this often causes confusion in the field. It might be best if you kept your distance from us. The second in command of the whole kit and caboodle, Dr. Carrington, he's a dick for no other reason that he's a dick. Oh, I wasn't aware we were competing for congeniality awards. And then there's Glory, a synth whose personality is downloaded from Tumblr. Oh, hell. Gen 1s. Man, if it's gotta be done... Yeah, it's gotta be done, you dumb bitch! Deacon, a wannabe disguise artist who enjoys watching you get poisoned... Hey, the shooter. What's in the shot? We got algae, some yummy bacteria culture, and just a little bit of battery acid. But, but we gotta burn those babies out of you! It's a hard reboot of your system, man. Hit me, Tom. Yeah, now you talk. What the fuck, Deacon? Ugh, I feel awful. Still, he's the only somewhat likable part of the railroad, and even then he tests my patience. Pam, a robot who can predict the future, but can't account for human anomalies. I predict the future. But you didn't predict me coming. That's correct. Caution. Biological life forms behave erratically, unpredictably. All output subject to an extremely high margin of error. And the absolute worst of them all. Just don't get it, Carrington. The Institute is in your blood. <sighs> there are not enough words in the English language to describe how much I want to kill you. You are the single worst character in this game. You are the Jar Jar Binks of Fallout. The fact that you are a vital part of the game for every run through chafes against my very existence. Please die in a fire and never open your mouth again. Why is this lunatic even here? Okay, so the organization is made for idiots, by idiots, but surely it pays well, right? Eh, kinda. Your rewards for working with the railroad are honestly a bit underwhelming. The only decent rewards you get from the railroad are the Deliverer, an admittedly decent 10mm pistol, the Ballistic Weave, which can add armor to certain clothing, but, you know, not uh, power armor or anything, and, of course, the Piste de Resistance, the Railway Rifle, which shoots railroad nails. Not gonna lie, this one's pretty rad. You see, the thing is, this gun... It, shoot, like, it shoots railroad nails, but you can actually retrieve them from bodies, making it easier to keep track of your ammo. Not to mention, it does a lot of damage and is very satisfying to see them, you know, peg into people, particularly if you shoot through that. One problem with it, though. You, they do not give it to you until you blow up the Brotherhood of Steel. That is the second-to-last story mission. So you do not get to use this gun until the very last bit of the game. Other than those nice things, guess what they give you? Fucking covert sweater vests. Yeah, there's a plural to that too. It's not just one covert sweater vest, multiple sweater vests. Yep, apparently we're running around dressed like Bill Cosby in here. Oh my gosh. But, you know, maybe you can put that aside. This doesn't seem too bad at first. But it gets worse. Because when you look at what the other factions give you in comparison, it's, oh, it's all downhill. First, the Minutemen. When you join the Minutemen, you get your first set of power armor, a laser musket, which is your first ever energy weapon, and a flare gun to call for backup. And then in the mid-game, they give you the ability to rain artillery shells down on your enemies. 
now the Brotherhood of Steel. You get a brand new set of power armor, a modified laser rifle, and the ability to call vertebrates that will escort you across the Commonwealth. And lets you fire a minigun while you do it! Then there's the Institute. You side with them, they let you call synths to come help you fight. You get a sweet laser rifle, but hey, you know. That sweater vest the railroad will give you, uh, they gave you will keep you warm as the Brotherhood Knight burns your world to the ground. This is fine. I'm okay with the events that are unfolding currently. That's okay. But the real kicker here is that they can give you better stuff earlier on, but they choose not to. We see other heavies, which are railroad agents that are trained to deal with, you know, big problems. We see them equipped with Goss rifles and plate armor. Why would you not give your best equipment to your best operative? That's like if the U.S. military went to SEAL Team 6 and says, All right, for your next mission, here's a pellet rifle. And you, grunt on duty? Yeah, you're not doing anything, right? No? Okay, here's a 50 caliber. Good job. Thank you, morons! Think! Okay. They may be terrible at what they do, and the pay is lackluster and ill-timed, and the people are largely incompetent. But at least they're fighting for a good cause. Are they, though? If we're looking at the moral high ground, the railroad is at sea level. What? But how isn't saving sense a good thing? Isn't slavery wrong? Shouldn't the Institute be stopped? Well, yes, yes, and yes. Considering my hatred for the railroad, it might surprise you to find out I actually believe synths in the context of Fallout 4 are analogous to people. Well, Gen 3s at least. I consider them on par with the clones from Star Wars, even down to the chip that controls their brains. So why then do I find railroad morally flawed? One word, priorities. Their whole goal in life is to liberate synths from the Institute, and that's it. Now, in any other universe, this might be a worthwhile goal. But this is Fallout we're talking about here. The setting is an apocalyptic wasteland scarred with radioactive Fallout. For the citizens of the Commonwealth, every day is a struggle to survive. Finding enough food and water is already an uphill battle. Let me tell you, farming ain't easy. Out in the field all day, every day, and every minute of it spent watching your back. Assuming... The basic necessities have been taken care of, you would still be living in constant danger of psychopathic raiders. Be ready to deal with the raiders. Why do all the hard work when you can just take what you want at gunpoint? Zombie-like ghoul hordes, killer robot swarms, wildlife from the sci-fi channel, radioactive weather, and the ever-looming threat that the Institute might kidnap your loved ones and replace them with synthetic copies. I know people give Preston a lot of shit. And believe me, I get it. I've gotten word about a settlement that's being threatened by raiders. But Preston's constant requests show, a di show what dire straits the Commonwealth is in. Everyone in the Commonwealth needs help. Everyone is struggling to survive. So, bearing all that in mind, I want you, yes you, to take a minute and put yourself in the shoes of the average Commonwealth settler just prior to the start of the game. The Minutemen are all but extinct. The Brotherhood of Steel is just a rumor. The only thing between you and your family and the nightmares of the Commonwealth is you. No one else is coming to help you. Now imagine if I asked if you'd be willing to put down your life and potentially the lives of your family to save a synth you don't know. It depends on the circumstances. There's no middle ground with this. Would you risk death to save a synth or not? Could you elaborate? Answer with your gut on this, your heart. If you had to put yourself in danger to save a synth, would you do it? I'd imagine you would probably tell me to go pound sand. With all the horrors the Commonwealth provides, it makes no sense to dedicate an entire organization solely to liberate sense. Yes, even if you believe that sense are people. With all that time and energy the railroad wastes on escorting sense to freedom, how many settlers could be given better living conditions? How many raider gangs could have been wiped out? How many feral ghoul hordes could have been put down? How many robots could have been disassembled? How 
many lives could have been saved, etc., etc., etc. Now, before any other Fallout aficionados say, the Minutemen already do yet, remember that at the start of the game, the Minutemen are reduced to one guy. Until you show up, the Railroad can't fall back on the excuse that the Minutemen will help them. No one was coming to help these people until the player came along. The Railroad was content to let the average citizen of the Commonwealth die without lifting a finger, but expend their entire manpower to save a handful of cents. They are the fallout equivalent of a hipster passing a homeless man starving on the street so he can complain about an animal poaching problem on Twitter while ordering a cup of coffee at Starbucks. Sure, saving cents is a noble goal but the people around you are fighting each day to stay alive. Maybe your time would be better spent aiding your fellow man so your escaped synths could have a decent world to escape to. Seriously, what's your plan? Well, you're now out of the Institute. Thank you. I'm now free from slavery. So now what? Now you get to live in a post-apocalyptic nuclear hellscape! Yay! How am I supposed to survive? You're on your own now, Chief. I recommend you resort to raiding. That becomes relevant later, trust me. A rogue synth has taken over the Raider gang at Libertalia. His memories have been erased, and his identity altered. He believes he's a man named Gabriel. Under his leadership, the Raiders have taken many innocent lives. I've dispatched a courser to Libertalia. I'd like you to join him and reclaim that synth. Who erased his memories? And why? Those idealistic radicals who call themselves the Railroad are behind it. It shouldn't be a surprise that the Institute itself views the Railroad as a joke. Oh god, those kooks. I would have expected they'd be too busy trying to liberate vending machines, or setting computer terminals free, or... Sorry, they just have something of a reputation. <sighs> And me personally, I am not going to lie to you, when I go through the Brotherhood run, I have a sadistic amount of glee shredding these dipshits with self-righteous authority. I only slightly feel bad for Deacon, as he can be funny at times. The Minutemen are back. Let's just hope you can keep the redneck element in check. Never mind, he dies with the rest. <sighs> Yet, this is not the end. It gets worse! When doing the railroad run through, you are asked not just to find the Institute, but work alongside them to gain more intel. As part of your infiltration, you have to find Patriot, the Institute insider who has been helping sneak out since for years. Prior to the player's infiltration, the Patriot was a mystery to the railroad. All they knew is that he was sending the synths out to be saved. In the railroad's eyes, this man should be nothing less than a hero. Even better, once you meet the Patriot, who turns out to be an uh, Institute scientist named Liam, he is ecstatic to meet you, and he is more than happy to help you and introduces you to his synth buddy who helps him find synths who want to leave the Institute. This synth's name is Z114. Upon meeting him, though, he starts hatching a plan to save multiple synths at once. You know, actually, I believe the correct number is 13 synths. Sounds like a great guy immediately meets a contact from the railroad without ever t talking to them directly before and immediately jumps on board to help out. Man, what a go-getter. I really like this guy. I do wonder how the railroad will reward him for his hard work and, you know, forward-thinking attitude. Oh, right, that's right. By tossing him and everything he stands for aside like a sack of potatoes. I kid you not, as soon as you talk with Desdemona and find out that there is a synth to work with instead of him... She straight up abandons any idea of working with him in favor of working with Z-14 for a full-scale uprising. Yeah, immediately as soon as like, ooh, I get to work with a synth instead of an actual human who's been saving our bacon for I don't know how long? Yeah, bump that guy. There is no attempt to reason with him or bring Liam in on the new plan or heck, even warn him to stay down during the fighting. Just nuke his whole world to oblivion, kill everything he has ever known or loved, and you find out at the very end he took his own life because of what the railroad did. Outstanding work. The one man who made your whole operation possible for years and you drive him to suicide. For me, 
This was the final straw. In their single-minded determination to remake the world as they see fit, they destroyed the one person who made it possible in the first place. This is the railroad's problem. Tunnel vision. Nothing else outside of their strict moral goal matters. There is no room to negotiate. Not the Commonwealth, nor the people inside it, not even the members of their own, are safe from their incompetence and single-minded drive. Okay. So that is a lot to process. And I've ranted a good deal on how the railroad has, is just terrible. But we can't just complain. We also have to figure out how to fix. So let's look at the railroad and figure out how do we fix this cacophony. Now, we could go into great detail, but if you work, but if we gave everything they need to fix it, they would no longer be recognizable as the railroad. So let's take the railroad and just tweak a little bit to make them far more salvageable. What's the easiest way to fix the railroad? Method one, have the railroad ally with the Minutemen early on. If you do a Minutemen run through rather than a railroad run through, you get the option when you take out the when you go to take out the institute to ally with the railroad to help each other out. If you take this alliance and make it much earlier on in the game, like right after you meet the railroad, this helps a great deal. They could work together to help recover not only their own organizations, but also the Commonwealth. They, the railroad can relax knowing that the Minutemen are taking care of most surface problems while they can solely focus on, on sense and the Institute at large until the very final battle. This makes far more sense to me. But there is another way that you don't, it doesn't even require the Minutemen. In fact, I think this is the best solution, arguably, for the world at large. So, method two, reform the Institute. So, little background. As I stated earlier, the railroad requires you to work with the Institute to gain intel. While working undercover, you wind up as director of the Institute. Yeah, not kidding. You lead the Institute. You, the Institute is yours now. You can do with it as you see fit. So, as director, your character is completely within their rights to halt synth production and free any synth who shows sign of free will. Will everyone in the Institute like that? Probably not, but you're the director, and it's established that they have the authority to discontinue lines of research even if doing so is unpopular. The previous director did so with cybernetics before, you can do so with sense, because Truth be told, not every scientist is ex in the Institute is excited about sense. A lot of them are kind of like, yeah, we get it. Can we focus on something else now, please? Now, they may be a minority, but you would still find some sympathetic ears. Imagine, if you will, that when you take over control in s of, the, of the Institute, imagine when you take over control, you instead decide to work with Liam to, you wait for the previous director to fully die, and you work with Liam to reform the Institute, while this may be a tad anticlimactic, you know, no big battle, this is by far the best choice for everyone. With the player as director, the Institute can put its scientific knowledge to good use, saving the Commonwealth, and all the sense who develop free will get to go free. The only problem with this plan, the only thing that stops it, is that it requires the members of the railroad to have basic cognitive faculties. <sighs> shame. Truly a shame. You could have had something, but instead, we got an absolute disaster. The railroad, I think, was derailed from the start. And that about does it for my brother's very first video on the channel. What did you guys think? Do you think that he made a lot of good points about why the railroad are a bunch of abject morons? Or do you think that he took one too many shots of Tinker Tom's juices and is a little crazy in the head? I'm willing to go either way on that one, but I'll let you guys be the judge. Leave a comment down below with your thoughts. Do, what do you think of the railroad? What do you think of Fallout 4? I know it's got a bit of a reputation, but me and my brother personally enjoy it. Uh, leave a like if you enjoyed this video. Give my brother some love. He really worked hard on this. This was a real big passion project for him. I know that he spent weeks just trying to figure out how to put this one together, and I was glad to get him get to teach him the basics of video editing software. Leave a subscribe later so that you can uh, help benefit the channel and keep it rolling so that we can produce more stuff like this, and we will see you in our next video. Take care.